Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt, a webcast that explores everything we currently know about the truth about aliens, human history, reality, consciousness, and the role meditation can do to help us understand all these things, and how we might all work together to build the best world possible for all beings, human or non-human alike. Meditation and Aliens is hosted by me, Matt Reddy. I'm an amateur ufologist. I have a degree in philosophy. I'm the creator of HiveOne.net. I'm also an elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. Each week, I am joined by Doro Kiley, longtime meditator, meditation teacher, and an experiencer with many stories, and life coach extraordinaire. You can find more about Doro at her website, creationcoach.com. Now, on to the show. Hello, hello. We're back for another episode. How are you doing, Doro? Super duper. I'm doing great. How are you doing, Matt? I'm good. I'm good. I was just uh I was just working on something that I think you'll get a kick out of. All right. They uh I saw on Twitter X um that a someone came up with a great idea for a contest related to uh UFOs and it, people's theories. And the uh the contest is basically for people to record a 10 to 15 minute like audio uh thing i guess like an audio monologue and to release it on twitter uh basically play it in a twitter space and then you basically you tag the uh, post and it gets entered into a contest and the <clears throat> the contest is your best explanation of what the heck is going on with ufos and aliens oh, that sounds good yeah it's yeah. it's like perfect it's kind of something you know almost i mean, also, I didn't think of it. It's like perfect, but it's, it's, you know, um, so yeah, so I've been working on, uh, my, I'm going to try probably enter something I've been writing up. Okay. In, in 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Can I like say what the heck I think is going on? Uh-huh. Uh, can you, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I did, you know, in the car driving home yesterday, I just like did one off the top of my head. And, uh, now I've just sort of been like, you know, I, I, then I turned it into text and I've just sort of been working through it saying like, okay, what do I want to say? How do I want to say it? And so, yeah, I've got a little, a pretty oh, good yeah. document here. Going. I would love to hear that. So you're just kind of uh, compiling all that you know into a summary, right? Yeah. 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 And so what I've done is I've put it in order of, I've started with like the really well-established facts um, you know, shall I just go through it and I'll try to I'll do, it, do it briefly. Let's jump in. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. Let's go. Okay. So, well, first, so what's going on with UFOs and aliens? First, start with the well-established facts. One, um, UFOs and alien craft are real. That's a pretty big one. <laughs> a lot of people get, uh, two, they've been here for thousands of years. Um, and that's a really important one. A lot of people in the UFO community don't jump to that but it changes everything if you realize they've been here for at least many hundreds of years but probably thousands of years that yeah and i was just watching linda moulton howe and she estimates that it's closer to two hundred and fifty thousand years yeah something like that really long time yeah and i and i think that it makes logical sense if they've been here for a thousand years they've probably been here you know essentially forever compared yeah. to us um Okay, uh, so let's see. Um, da, da, da. There's also overwhelming evidence that abductions and, and alien encounters ha really happen. Right. Um, there's also overwhelming evidence that the government and private sector uh, has been covering up and hiding some sort of UFO technology reverse engineering program. Mm-hmm. Um, the... The fact that many of these alien abduction stories are true gives us some idea of the the needs of the aliens and their ethics since they do this. Um, so question. Um, okay. From uh, Linda Moulton Howe's perspective, there are many uh, races here with many different agendas. 
So, so how do you fit that into, into a concise <laughs> summary? Yeah. Mm. yeah, no, I definitely, and that is definitely on my list. It's not in my, I mean, it might be almost in, it's in the next, after we do the well-established facts, Good. we go into uh, highly likely based on information. And, and yeah, one of those that, uh, is that there are, there seem to be many different, at least four different uh types of aliens. I think actually five different types of aliens are really well established. And that mm -hmm. indicates they could have different agendas. They definitely, yeah. some could have different ethics and agendas. Definitely agree there. Mm -hmm. um, another really well established thing is at least part of the US government and its close allies know about the reality of the aliens. Yeah. This is this is all like the really, really basic, basic stuff. But right. Um, Set so the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the foundation. Yeah. So then um, I go into uh, highly likely facts based upon the information and logic. Uh, one is that there's multiple alien species, including human looking, short grays, tall grays, reptilian and insectoid slash mantid appearing ones. Yeah. Um, so now... So this is just from logic. Uh, the aliens must live somewhere. They must have factories and hospitals, city spaces. Um, they've been since they've been flying around Earth for a very long time. It's really logical that they have cities and bases, really either in, on, or very near to Earth. And so now, based then just like logically extrapolating from that, these are likely. Uh, you know, underground, underwater, extremely remote on Earth, if they are on Earth at all. And they also, of course, could be in our solar system on the moon. Or on the moon, right? Yeah. I think um, Linda, Linda Moulton House says they're on the moon yeah. and on the Mars. So yeah. and, and according to the Israeli, you know, space chief, he says, and others, there's bases on Mars. Yeah. Um. So let's see. There's also so this is where we're getting into their relationship with humanity. It seems, based on evidence and logic, that at least some of these aliens would have established relationships with some of the human power structures on Earth, and it could be governments, families, corporations, religious organizations, educational institutions, or secretive or secret societies, and that these relationships would likely have to have been a, something that they could have maintained and nurtured over very long time frame like thousands of years time frames much longer than most humans sort of think and that most human institutions have existed but a few have stretched yeah. and you can see yeah. threads back um let's see so now just getting into more speculative just sort of things like the human appearing aliens they could be that they are a different species and we were made to look like them or they could be human descendants uh, from humans that have been a part of alien society. They could have been abducted into their societies and integrated. And uh, it would be very valuable for a foreign civilization to have a bunch of loyal members who could easily blend into human society for all sorts of reasons. Um, so there's that. The, the faction in the know within the U.S. government likely has some sort of secret diplomatic relationship with these beings, or at least some of these beings. And, and not that, just the United States, right? Are you imagining just the, no, more than just the United States, I would think. Yeah, well, I, I don't think it could be, because I think this goes back thousands of years, I think it's actually, it's, it's inappropriate to think that it's really contained within the United States. Yeah. The United States has not existed thousands of years. So right. yeah. the the C, human secret keepers uh, and their organizations go back way beyond the beginning of the U.S. So, But there is clearly some faction within the U.S. government that maybe it has its relationship isn't with the aliens. It might be with the the truly powerful human secret keeper organization that ex has existed on Earth, mm -hmm. secret group. And so the, um, and that's sort of like a kind of a likely thing that the 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 faction within the U.S. government that's keeping the secret, they probably are subservient to the uh, the either the aliens or the human secret keeper group that know that has the direct relationship with the yeah, aliens. Yeah, that's what I believe. They're they're sort of like working for them. They're not yeah. calling the shots themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really big point to try to 
And I mean, and you know, it's like as if all of this stuff was easy to understand when you get to the point where you have to start to realize that the the US government, or at least the the faction that is connected to the aliens and all this alien technology is subservient to some secret hidden group. That's that's a really disturbing thought that I mean, mm -hmm. I I really had to wrestle with that for you know several weeks as it became once it first was obvious to me that that has to be true it's really sort of a scary and disturbing thought it is yeah yeah you know linda talks a lot about this um she says this planet you know as far as most of all these aliens are as concerned is that this planet is considered a, a laboratory mm -hmm. And, you know, we are just one of the little Petri dishes. This particular lineage of our human race is just one little Petri dish. And, you know, it's just like she was saying, uh, we have to say, you know, you may have created us, but we are declaring our sovereignty. And I know you've been talking a lot about this. And so I just wanted to uh, underscore that. Um, she also says most of it is uh, the bad guys are uh, two races of reptilians. There's a lizard race, and she says something like an alligator race. And they're all upright, standing upright, tall reptilians, and they're the ones doing mutilations and stuff and uh, kidnapping, you know, people and animals just for their genetic trials and more Petri dishes. So anyway, yeah. I didn't I didn't want to cut you off, but go ahead, continue. Well, I mean, that's kind of it's it's kind of the struggle with I have with this. There's there's like I, I it seemed natural to start with like the almost boring but really well established sort of like facts. You know, I don't even call them facts, but mm -hmm. it, like sort of pretty well established um, pieces of information. But I'll just call them facts about mm -hmm. the situation. Right. And then, but the fun part is getting into the details, the real details of what are the different species, what are they doing? Um, and I think, you know, uh, but but then actually, I guess where it gets really important is to try to get even beyond that. Because if like, if Earth is a Petri dish or a zoo of some sort, that is kind of like the ultimate question of why, like what the heck is gained by keeping humans in this um, Petri dish? I mean, what is, who is gaining something from this and benefiting from it to, to, to maintain this? You know, it, it seems to me based on, based on all the information, the abduction stories, the alien encounters that there are indeed multiple powerful uh, alien civilizations. Um, you know, I'll just call them alien, even though some of them might be human looking. Mm -hmm. They're separate from our civilization. And some of them seem really nefarious and unethical, but many of them, it seems they have, uh, they really want, you know, they don't seem to want suffering. They seem to prefer humanity gets enlightened and figures out how to be good stewards of earth and, you know, figure out how to have a peaceful uh, society on earth. Yeah. And, and she was saying to that point that we do have allies that are trying very hard to, you know, boost us and get us to the point where we can find our own sea legs, so to speak, and stand on our own. Uh, but she was saying they these allies of ours are not all powerful. They're dealing with a lot of, other races that are saying, why do you care so much about these animals? You know, us, um, that, that the allies are trying to help us be sovereign, but we have to start making a move. We got to sort of make more claims and statements like, you know, we, we want to know what's going on. We deserve to be a, a part of the, the, uh, the information that's being shared. I mean, so, but she says almost emphatically that, that we have to start standing up for ourselves and declaring independence because right now we're just in a Petri dish. Yeah, it. Um, I think that sort of like uh, connects to the point that's really hard to understand. And that's the secrecy. You know, yeah. even if you 
if you are a good alien race and you wanted humanity to be uh you know healthy and not be exploited by malevolent aliens or by horrible governments of humans keeping yourself secret and hidden uh doesn't really help humanity free itself and right. so it's like it, it th so that's like to me, one of the really key points to come up to really understand what are they doing and why are they doing it, that they would keep the secrecy going in the way they have. She and also, talks about it. You know, um, I say what she says is that the the, the conflict is coming from uh, certain species who are using us um, for not so, you know, benevolent purposes. Uh, and they don't want any of us to have any disclosure, you know, on that side. Uh, they want to keep things as it is. They, they don't want to give us freedom. They don't want to let us know anything because they're using us, you know. And she says this is um, for blood and for DNA and for whatever other purposes. Um, so, so whatever our allies are doing, they are limited in what they can do, uh, until, you know, of course, they're pushing for disclosure because that's the only thing that's going to help us even assess where we are, let alone stand up on our own two feet. Uh, but there's a push about, you know, keeping it all secret. So that's what they're fighting against. And I think what we're doing right here is important because, you know, if this it, all of this is true, we got to we got to get the word out. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It'll, it'll be. Um, yeah. It's it's really it's it's sort of fascinating how this is all playing out. Boy. It seems like, um, you know, with with Carl Nell, Colonel Carl Nell coming out, it, now the the list of um, whistleblowers and government, military, high powered, respected people that are saying aliens are real. It, the list is powerful now. It's you got. You've got David Fravor, Alex Dietrich, jet pilots, incredibly credible witnesses. Okay, David before Crush. running through it too fast, give a, just a, you know, like say what they are. Is it a pilot or is he with us? You know, who are they with? So pilots, David Fravor and Alex Dietrich, who flew and saw the Tic Tac UFO, yeah. the okay. famous um, Go Fast uh, video is a recording of that by another pilot, Underwood. Um, then you have David Grush, who was assigned, he was like a former intelligence advisor to the president and assigned to investigate this. And he's come out and said they're real and testified before Congress under oath that there's a secret reverse engineering uh, UFO program uh, hidden in the government that they're not showing to Congress. Lou Elizondo, former uh, intelligence and researcher on UFOs in the Pentagon, said these after real Christopher Mellon, former deputy secretary of defense. Wow. Uh, Tim Gallaudet, rear admiral of the Navy has come out and said, these are real. And, and he, he's, he just came out with a great interview on the Sean Ryan podcast talks for like two hours about his career in the Navy and oceanography. And, and it was so beautiful the way he he said the reason he's gone public is because this is really a safety concern for the military and for pilots now. This is just offensive that they, you know, he's like, if it's a secret military program, you're putting our pilots in danger, not clearly telling us, at least within the military, that. And but he's convinced it's not. It's he's convinced it, this is this is some sort of alien either, you know, he says it's either aliens from another planet or it's aliens that coexist on earth that have been here before us, some sort of breakaway civilization. Um, yeah. If a civilization originally came here 250 million years ago and settled here. Yeah. And now here we are all these gazillion years later, do we say that they're from here? <laughs> they Well, they could have evolved here. We know yeah. life started evolving on earth pretty much yeah. within 500 million years of if not even sooner. And so it, they could have evolved here, had it developed through all sorts of stages of civilization, and they might have left and come back, or they might have just been living underground or underwater this whole time. And the, the surface of the earth turns itself over so much that we they could have been here and built cities. And if it was over a billion years ago, there would be no evidence on the surface of the earth. Um, yeah. And I, and I do think 
that this is a time, I, I don't know, you know, these cycles, uh, 11,800 year cycles, whatever they are, where the world goes through some changes. My bet is they come back and they pick up as much as they can, almost like a Noah's Ark. They take DNA from every animal and get it off the planet while the planet shifts its, you know, magnetic uh, poles or whatever it does and kind of gets wiped out again. And then they come back and reseed everything. And this is in the Sumerian tablets that they actually do come back and reseed the planet after these, you know, extinction events. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah well, that, but I mean, that goes back to the ethics of them because yeah. if they um, are, are you saying, I mean, if they are causing the wipeout of the surface civilization, or they're just allowing it to happen. And are they taking any action to save the lives of any of the beings That's, that are on the surface during this? Yeah. My, is that my what, sense is, is that, that it's possible that when their planet comes back around, we've talked about this before, because it's on a very elliptical orbit. If we're talking about Nibiru, uh, and so when that planet comes back around, if it is on a like a 12,000 year orbit, um, if every time it comes near to this planet or into our solar system, it, it can shake things up. The, the density of the planets are pulling on each other's, you know, gravity fields and uh, electromagnetic, whatever. Uh, and that's one theory about what causes the electromagnetic poles to to reverse possibly is when this influence comes back into our orbit um so the theory would go that they they know that this is going to happen because their planet does this so they come here to their little laboratory petri dish and collect as much as they can to save it and uh, and then you know and and this is all theory you know obviously everything we're talking about until we have full disclosure but the but then everything gets turned upside down the the plant the continents get wiped out and then they come back uh after it's all completed when their planet is you know on its way back out and they reseed it now that's you know it's far out there it's way out there if you can even think for a minute that that might be real but um, it's possible. It's a theory. I think that's what we can only play with is theories for now until there's real disclosure. So, but even if, if that theory or something similar to it is true, some cyclical, uh, event that causes massive destruction of the surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, in your theory, it, are humans, do they try to save yeah. some of the humans on the surface? Yeah, and you could even say, oh, that's what's meant when they say, you know, going, what do they call that religious thing? Rapture, right? Revelations and rapture, yeah. <laughs> Everybody disappears. Oh, they, they've they been raptured, right? I don't know. But the religion is another interesting thing, because uh, Linda Moulton Howe was saying, uh, well, somebody asked her, you know, what's the best way for disclosure to take place? You know, should it be through the president of the United States? And and she said, oh, no, she said, really, the best way for full disclosure should come through the Pope. I thought that was interesting. Huh. What do you think about that one? Um, well, I mean, it, regardless of how it happens, if um, I think one of the uh, one of the aspects of it that say they do, whether they disclose or they like allow a several million humans to go up into space and join their society you have the whole issue either way of um the differences between human society and alien society and alien culture and this is something that's really caught my attention lately is what this might and this might be one of the reasons they they tend not to reveal themselves is because their culture may be structured so differently than ours or, and in fact, the the individual freedom and free thinking and sort of chaos of individual humans might be kind of threatening to the stability of the way their culture works. Because if they've been around millions of years, if not billions of years, let's say thousands, millions of years, they probably have an extremely rigidly structured society. And so, like, you know, you and I have talked about countries trying to establish the centralized 
uh, central bank digital currencies mm -hmm. and one world government, you know, I mean, it's those two things seem to me highly likely to be exactly how the human uh, alien civilizations are structured. Mm -hmm. and, and so it might be that even the good ones, the, 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 the ones that are more good and ethical, they probably have cent super central single governments and they probably don't have a chaos of currencies and and uh, cryptocurrencies they probably just have one currency that they centrally control you know i do have some thoughts about this whole wef great reset mm -hmm. i think a lot of their intention is good you know they they want to preserve you know the planet and and the whole you know the the life and everything i think what they want is is good i just think they don't know where to draw the line uh, you know, because if they keep with the, let's say, for example, the CBDC, we're all doing the CBDC, and there's no more cash or whatever. Everything we do is being monitored and uh, uh, regulated. Um, I just, I just can't see that 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 would work on a minuscule level. I mean, people want to live in the country, and I think a lot of um, the WEF goal is to get most people into the cities so that the country can regrow and rethrive itself that rewild itself i think that's what they're calling it uh and i think that's too much control i don't know what do you have any thoughts on that i'm just trying to um yeah, i mean it it seems to me that the w the world economic forum the bilderberg group these to me are highly suspicious organizations yeah. that because it if there is a group of humans that has been in the know and maybe coordinating with a, some alien group then those are like on my list of top prospects them the illuminati the freemasons the catholic church other churches um they and the fact that the they seem to be trying to take us to a, a, a one world government. Um, I mean, I, I'm actually not in principle opposed to the idea of a one world government if it was a good, peaceful, enlightened government. I was just going <laughs> to say that, you know, I would be all for it if we trusted them. <laughs> yeah, if, but, yeah. It, you know, it's you can't. Uh, but it seems that some of the secret keepers and power on Earth, I mean, it, it seems to me that there are some fairly power hungry um brutal people in control of earth and there there probably is at least yeah. one part of the aliens there some some group of reptilians on earth in earth in the oceans that is uh i i get the sense that they at least either were the most powerful aliens on earth they might still be but but one of the issues that is that uh makes me think I mean, one of the things that makes the most sense to me is that the the bad aliens were in great power on Earth, but something changed maybe even within the last 20 years that they are no longer in power and humans and some good aliens are working through slow disclosure. That seems to the fact that all these powerful people, you know, uh, Fravor, Dietrich, you know, Grush, Elizondo, Mellon, Gallaudet, um, and also, you know, can't forget the Israeli space chief, uh, Haim Eshed, Canadian minister, Paul Hellier, and that they are all slowly coming forward. It, se it seems like if you, if the power, if the secret keepers were really malevolent and really had their act together, they would have stopped these guys. They would have killed them. They would have done stuff to prevent, you know, they would have cut off at, at least, you know, cut off their military pensions and made sure that they, you know, really, it wasn't in their interest to, to yeah. come out and forward, but they're allowing it to happen. They, the, the faction within the U S government that is, um, that want seems to be working for disclosure. They seem well organized. They don't seem afraid. They, they seem to just be working slowly along a timeline of getting information out. And I think, um, so that just makes me feel like the, the 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 really evil humans and possibly the really evil you know aliens that 
maybe have worked with them for thousands of years. To maybe it's the blob. Have you heard that? <laughs> the blob. Anyway, go ahead. I didn't. <laughs> go ahead. Well, it's just you know it it seems, um, I don't know. It feels like maybe the more uh, well, it just it doesn't seem like the 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 really malevolent secret keepers. I, they don't seem to be in a ton of power right now. They're at least they're not. Um, but they might be, you know, there might be some sort of struggle. They might be trying to form a one world government that'll be like super authoritarian and controlling or, um, I don't know. So, so, um, I'm coming back to Linda Moulton, how she, she's so interesting. Um, disclosure, she says disclosures not ha or hasn't been happening because they feel that humans can't handle it. What's your feeling about that? Well, Carl Nell, he said something like that too. And 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 this guy has been in the room where they, he really seems to have been in the room where they were discussing this. And he, and he says, you know, besides the fact that it keeps a military advantage for them to keep this knowledge and the knowledge of the technology secret. He right. said, actually, one of the huge ones is they're just not sure of how the world will react and they don't want to completely destabilize the entire world, all the economies, the the oil industry, the U.S. dollar, and just like uh, just the mental, emotional well-being of humans having their world completely shocked by this. He he says they are worried about that. They're just like, you know, they're just not willing to roll a dice and say, you know, there's a five percent chance that the entire <laughs> world goes into absolute chaos if we let this information out in the wrong way. Yeah, I hear. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 um, but the the Linda Moulton held her her argument against that is if you don't disclose it in a at least semi attempt to to control the disclosure. She said something will happen where it's just going to all come out all at once. And she said that would just be cruel uh, because it would just blow everybody's mind. So now is the time, she says, is to begin a controlled, you know, disclosure. So we can, you know, we're going to, some of us are going to go crazy and, you know, whatever, whatever people are going to do. Uh, but she says it should be done starting now otherwise it's going to be a big bang when it ha when it all comes out i don't know how well, could they do it how could they it do it like, in a controlled way i don't know I, I feel like they are i mean that the, the uh -huh. these you know it uh with david grush christopher mellon tim gallaudet uh carl nell i mean this is this is controlled disclosure they are they are it's all good. officials of the government they're coming out they're clearly saying this oh uh, as a part of a news thing yeah. you remember the the Schumer Amendment, the UAP Disclosure Act from right. last year that didn't fully get in. Well, it they've reintroduced squashed. it. They, oh. they, they reintroduced it for this year. So it's going right. to come back up. Um, oh, for the election. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> so it's like it's back on the table for this coming year. And that's a big deal. You know, it's it like the, the push. I mean, and, and I guess that's that's one of the huge things is, is this going to get on the election stage like, uh, like bitcoin yeah. has gotten into the election i mean there's been a shift in the republican party trump and biden all realizing you can't be anti-bitcoin it's it's like there's too much now people that realize it's critical for freedom there's yeah. 50 million people in the u.s that own bitcoin that are just not going to vote for a candidate that's just like blindly opposed to it so exactly. that was a that was a beautiful shift so could the same thing happen that this this topic uh, could it get on a debate stage if they have a debate whether or not they're they keep RFK Jr. out of it which I think is a atrocity it but is if they have the debate oh, man if we could get a question on the alien topic and force them both mm -hmm. to at least give the correct answer that they would reveal the truth but they've both been president and they could have revealed the truth. You know? Well, exactly. You know, you wonder if, if this is, I mean, you know, I, I've got, I don't know who to vote for because we've got these issues, aliens and Bitcoin and, you know, freedom of speech and everything. Um, I just, I just feel like this issue of disclosure is probably the most important issue. Don't you? If it's real, this this has to come out. Yeah, yeah. If, if 
if there's a group of humans that have been secretly controlling the earth yeah. and hiding the biggest secret of I human history. I think it's history. more important than Bitcoin and everything. I mean, this is big. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, the good thing about Bitcoin is they can't actually stop it. I mean, Bitcoin, I think, is an important force for human history because it's, uh, it's essential for humanity to have a form of money that they can trust. That is like right. really, and also a form of sharing information that can't be censored. And, and Bitcoin is a technology that can't be stopped. And it is preferable to me that the governments don't try to destroy it because I think, you know, um, so, I mean, I prefer that personally, but, you know, but yeah, I mean, the fact that our government is possibly corrupt and has been, has and murdered JFK and covered it up because he was going to spill the beans on aliens, murdered RFK for the same reason, possibly murdered Forrestal, murdered Bill Cooper, um, possibly some of these wars and conflicts have literally just been contrived to benefit the secret keepers. These are... I mean, I think that's also one of the reasons, you know, and then Carl Nell said this, one of the reasons they don't disclose is because of the domino effect of crimes and misdeeds that get uncovered also completely <laughs> yeah. upset people. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. no, th that's what they're trying to hide. Th th I mean, that's why there hasn't been more disclosure. They're trying to cover up all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, if here's a question for you. In the perfect world, how would all of this unfold in your world, in your perfect world? Uh, in that fast. It would do it, like, do it fast, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I think mm -hmm. it's like, um, I'm just, but I'm just impatient with it. Um, you know, I mean, if they, if they pass this, this, NDAA it creates a government council that is like its job is to try to figure out a, a, a controlled disclosure plan, but I just don't think they would work fast enough. I think, I think more whistleblowers, more, maybe, you know, maybe a good hearing, a congressional hearing where they just blow the lid off. Like, like what could have done it? It's too late now because I think he's too old, but when they had David Grush and Fravor and Ryan Graves testify before Congress, you know, if they if they had a Senate hearing and they could bring in Obama and Clinton and they could Ooh. have brought in Carter, they could have brought in President Carter while he was alive enough. And I, my my hope is that Jimmy Carter recorded a video where he just told the truth and he just like said, look, you know, aliens are real. They're here. These are the two or three major alien governments that we interact with. And this is the basic history and I'm sorry we hid this. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. But, you know, it's like, what would happen then? I don't know what would happen. Yeah. I mean, what do you think people would do, generally speaking, all over the I mean, world? I think I think they'd start protesting, but in a protest, like to demand the truth. And so there would have to be a, you know, the government would have to start spilling the truth in some rate. And um you know it's just like it's these these truth bombs there's i guess the question is how many truth bombs are there is it just if it's just the jfk rfk assassinations and that a part of the cia has been rogue a rogue part of the government in control of some secret group of humans uh if it's just goes that far maybe it wouldn't be that bad but if it goes to the point of like every war, Vietnam, Korea, 9-11. 200,000 you know. years of history. Yeah, right? it's, it's like every <laughs> single war and millions and millions of people have died, you know, because of the secret keepers manipulating humanity. It's like, I don't know what we'll do. I don't know what humanity will do with that. You know what? I think we would really step up to the plate. I really do. I think humans would be just like, take the covers off you know it's like let's get real i think i think it would be great i think we would see humanity pull together uh in a phenomenal way because i think that's what people do um it just comes to my mind you know if you've ever been in a situation i'm thinking here in virginia my brother and i were on the blue ridge parkway and it's just miles and miles and miles no exits right so it's just driving through the mountains 
and there was a huge tree that fell down right in the middle of the road and it was no way to get to town unless you turn around and go 15 miles back uh and so p people were piling up there the cars were piling up on both sides of the road next thing you know we've got 30 people out there working together with chainsaws and you know, everybody just pulling this tree apart, taking it off the road. And, you know, when it was all done, everybody, you know, shook hands and wiped their brow and, you know, got back in their cars with big smiles. And it was a great time had by all. I think we have that in us. When there's a, when there's a challenge, especially, you know, the more dire it seems, the better we pull together. That's my that's my view of humanity. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. I mean, that's and that's the power of the chaos of humanity and democracies where we have freedom of thought and free ideas. We are we're able to adapt and integrate new ideas. Might be more challenging actually in countries where their culture is, you know, much more repressed and really forced to not think very openly authoritarian countries um yeah i mean you know i think i guess it's inevitable if if, if this completely blows open you've got to have the u.s government's going to have to come out with this is what we know and this is what we think is the true history of humanity and wars and all these this is truly what was happening behind the scenes but it's going to be their controlled story but yeah. then other countries they got to have, they're going to be like, okay, well, this is actually what we see as the true history of humanity. And then, but maybe the aliens will come out and say, hey, we've been sitting here the whole time. This is the truth as we have it. Because we're going to want to know the truth just to understand it. But then there's also the accountability. Humans that are alive right now that have been a part of atrocities, you know, they're not interested in being held to account. So I've always thought part of the reason disclosure was waiting, a lot part of the reason the JFK assassination truth, they were waiting for the people to die because they didn't really want to, yeah. to get, they didn't want to really go to jail. But maybe once they all died, they could finally tell us who really did it. You can but, know in 70 years, you can open the file in 70 years. <laughs> yeah. But then they realized, no, we can't tell you because those people had children and they're still powerful families. Like, yeah. you know, the, the Bush family, you know, my, the, uh, the, maybe the the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, you know, who knows what families were actually really connected. And they are like, we don't want to be embarrassed by admitting that our grandfather helped coordinate the because it also then leads to because our we're involved with corporations that have been secretly getting advantage and secretly exploiting things and involved in other yeah. And you know, it just it's so brilliant because I think I think that what a lot of people are are looking for is the truth outside ourselves. What's our government saying? What's going on in, you know, China or whatever? We're looking outside, 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 always trying to find the truth. And I think the the most ingenious thing that these extraterrestrial intelligences have been able to do is to speak to us through our own mind. And that's causing, I think, some confusion for people. Because you can't, some some of us have a hard time differentiating between what's me and what's another thought coming from somewhere else. Uh, but I think the aliens are, you know, the, the benevolent um, allies that we have that Linda Moulton Howe was talking about are capable of telepathic communication. And, and they're going right, they're coming right to us They're The good guys are coming straight into our own head. If, if, uh, if we can hear it. Um, so we don't have to be looking outside of ourselves all the time, although it's nice to get that confirmation from Congress. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, it's like a lot of this is just the details and it's really, it's, it's what's more interesting to me is really the overall framework of what the heck is going on with this reality. And it seems you know, for me, if it starts to connect with near death experiences, if you, you know, I, I watch, there's tons of tons of people that are sharing their near death experiences on YouTube. And mm. when they describe what they experience, it, it, you know, it really lends itself to the whole idea that we're living in a simulation of some sort, some sort of like really controlled 
computer simulation and that that and if if something like that is true it just makes sense that this whole alien thing everything about this universe is basically a giant puzzle box designed to challenge us as you know as individuals as societies so that we grow and learn and before we're or develop our ethics develop our morals and value before we're allowed out of this puzzle box into whatever the whatever the next level of reality is um, so let's let's look at that what you just said there to, so the way i see that the the way you worded it it's it almost like we're stuck here until until we can figure this out and get out of this problem i almost want to see it more like a video game it's like oh maybe we'll get to the next level you know maybe not maybe we will but there's no absolute dire problem it's just we're playing this competitive you know whatever kind of game it is to try to 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 know know it all know everything to know the disclosure to know where, who we are um it's like playing pin the tail on the donkey we we're blind to to who we are and we're trying to find out where we fit um anyway that that was yeah i think i think we can trust that this is this is more in, supposed to be fun <laughs> that's what i like to this is supposed yeah. to be a fun game even though it's difficult it's challenging it's frustrating it's scary um but it's the game that we we signed up for i see yeah it yeah and well i mean whether or not we're in some sort of controlled video game you know or we get out of the video game and we're in whatever the other level is I mean, you're always somewhere and it's like it's not like the nature of the challenge of life changes you're you're always going to be challenged by what you see what you feel and you have to decide how you're going to interact and relate to your feelings and your your happiness it's the it's not like you know they, they reveal aliens are real or they reveal we're living in a video game it's not like ah, oh, now everyone gets happiness it's just like <laughs> you still have to figure out how to face whatever information you're given yeah yeah so so in my view the best thing to do is to see it as a as a challenge which it is obviously and um hopefully you know i i think christians have a real hard time with this uh more than i do because i don't I don't um, have a, a religion per se. I guess Buddhism might be the closest thing for me. But yeah, it, it's it's difficult because in Hinduism and Buddhism, really, ultimately, we're not even human, right? Okay, we are a consciousness. And we're just traveling around. We're going from body to body, from one experience to the next, and, you know, in and out of lives and, and environments. So there's really no end to it. Um, and all we're really doing is trying to figure out what, what's going on and which way we want to go. Um, and it's scary sometimes. Yeah. And I think that's where meditation comes in. Because when you can't figure it out, which we can't right now, um, the, the best thing to do is just be okay with everything and relax and breathe. Yeah. And it's okay. And here we are. Well, with that, shall we go into a closing meditation? I think it's a good time for that. All right. Okay, let's get comfortable and follow the bell. So let's just Take a couple of deep breaths and just feel in our body what's going on. All of this information is a little bit scary, maybe a little ungrounding. Is it real? What can I hold on to? And really, there's nothing to hold on to. And that's scary for some people, but hey, here we are. Breathing right here. Breathing in and breathing out. 
And this is where we can feel that connection with each other, with this beautiful planet. Just being right here in this tiny little space between future and past. This little place where our senses are able to pick up information, and feel things, see things. And we don't have to figure it all out. Just sensing. Be like an animal, be like a squirrel. All you do is sensing, feeling, smelling, touching, breathing. Feet on the floor. Feel the gravity pulling you down and supporting you. This little space of quiet is like a sanctuary. You can always come home to it. Things might get scary. Things might get confusing. It's okay. We're all just right here. We're not necessarily human, so if we just suddenly lost our body tonight, we'd still be somewhere. Ramdas used to say it's not about what you say or what you do, it's about who you are. And you can't displace that. We're right here. So let's just take a minute and breathe. There's only two trains of thought that the mind can go on. It's either going to go on the train of trying to get what we want, trying to figure things out, or it's going to go on another train where we try to figure out how to not get what we don't want and push away what we don't want. So you're either going to go one way or the other. And there is a way to stay right in the middle, right here, right now. Let's imagine ourselves out in space looking down at this beautiful blue planet. Beautiful blue oceans, clouds. This is everything we know. All of our ancestors, stories, history, poetry, music. It's all here on this little blue dot. So let's imagine just barely reaching out and cupping this blue planet in our hands so gently. and acknowledge all of her diversity, creativity, even if it is just a laboratory, it's pretty magnificent. All the elements, water creatures. So let's say to this beautiful blue planet, May you be well, may you be happy. 
May you be protected. May all of your diversity thrive. And whatever other species or consciousnesses out there that might be interested in our little home, let's just stand strong and say, this is our home. Maybe we can share it if you tell us about yourselves, but this is our home. And we want to protect her. Just look at her in your cupped hands. She's so beautiful. Think of all the music we have created together, all the stories, all the things we've made. This is our world. We might be the new kids on the block, but this is our world. So we'll just send some gratitude to this beautiful planet. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora. Have a great week. You too.